talk about in the book then is who are the lawyers and have we lost our way? And if we've lost our way, where did it all start? When my dad was practicing law, he would periodically meet with other lawyers at the end of the workday for a scotch to discuss a case and a deal would be scratched out on the back of a cocktail napkin. He would come home for dinner most nights and spend time with my brothers, my mother, and me. He operated a lot like I remember thinking Perry Mason worked as I watched that famous lawyer on television. What I know for certain is that he drove his practice from a base of compassion. Any of us who live outside our value systems suffer. Even if we choose to numb ourselves to this reality, there are symptoms that plague us. My hypothesis is that lawyers that go to law school, self-included, really went there to help people. We're compassionate individuals, we really want to help people. But when we get there, they reprogram us to be combatant and to take people down and to blame. And so they reprogram us into what I call in the book our deferential mode. We have to defer to what we think you want us to be as a lawyer. We have to defer to what we think people expect as a lawyer. And instead, we really yearn to be our authentic selves. So as a result, we're living outside our value systems. And here's what happens. Lawyers rank fourth in suicides by, prevention, by profession. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, lawyers rank fourth behind dentists, pharmacists, and physicians in rates of suicide. Lawyers are 3.6 times more likely to suffer from depression than non-lawyers, and the problem begins in law school. Law students may not know what they're getting themselves into when they sign on for a legal education. Studies show that depression for lawyers clearly begins in law school. Before they enter law school, students have the same level of psychological distress as the general public. In fact, some law students report higher levels of positive affect and life satisfaction that, um, than other undergraduates. But six months after starting law school, psychological distress increases dramatically for law students. Although one could argue all professional schooling is grueling, the research shows that compared to medical students, law students have much higher levels of stress, stress symptoms, and alcohol abuse. So think about a surgeon. A surgeon's in there trying to save somebody, but nobody's sending somebody in to kill the doctor. <laughs> when we go to court to try to help somebody, there's somebody over there trying to take us down. Reaching out can be seen as a sign for weakness. We have to apply to the bar. And if we apply to the bar and say we're depressed or whatever, they might say our character is not fit to be able to practice law. So we don't seek help. We also suffer from workaholism. The American Bar Association reports that in 2001, the average lawyer work week was 60 hours per week, and that a 40-hour work week was considered part-time work. In 2007, 56% of extreme workers, including lawyers, worked 70 hours a week or more. 25% worked 80 hours a week, and 9% worked more than 100 hours a week. We're the second most likely profession to have a car crash. How weird is that? I think it's because we're working late hours and probably tipping the bottle because we have a high level of alcoholism. Studies show 20% of lawyers have drinking problems, and research has found that 70% were likely to develop alcohol-related problems over the course of their lifetime, compared with just 13.7 of the general population. 